Changed is an RPG Maker indie game developed by Dragon Snow. It features anthropomorphic characters and as such is known as a furry game. So let's talk about it. But before I carry on, if you do find this game intriguing at any point in the video and want to play it, then I suggest doing so, as I believe the game is best enjoyed blind and I may end up spoiling parts of the story for you. Now I will first start off with a short summary of the gameplay and then I'll go into a more general summary of the story which will then lead into the discussion and my overall final thoughts on the game. First things first are the controls, and they are quite simple. You use arrow keys to move and hold shift to sprint. Unfortunately the game doesn't support WASD, which is a shame, especially since my keyboard's arrow keys are very cramped. Also, Alt plus Enter does this for some reason. Now. The whole objective of the game is to survive and solve puzzles along the way as you make your way out of the building that you so happen to find yourself in. But you may ask, survive from what? Well, this weird goo on the floor of course. Why? Well if you step on it, this happens. Yeah, this is quite the unique game. Now this turning into a furry thing is called a transformation and it will happen over and over and over again as some parts of the game do get somewhat difficult. This is where the F12 key comes in handy, as it sends you back to the main menu where you can easily reload your last save, skipping the death animation. Pretty nifty. Save points are also quite generous in this game, and I never found the areas to be too lengthy either. This is pretty much all that there is to the gameplay. Just run away from furry monsters and avoid semen puzzles while solving one or two puzzles here and there. There are also a few gimmicks that change up the gameplay ever so slightly, like slippery tiles for instance. And I think that's it in terms of the general gameplay of the game. And so next up is the story. The story starts off with the protagonist waking up from a deep slumber inside the weird capsule. And with this, the game begins. After solving a few easy puzzles and making it through the furry infested rooms, you soon approach the first boss of the game, which isn't too difficult to defeat, you just have to avoid spikes and more goo monsters. When the boss is beaten, you'll be able to talk to them, giving small clues onto what's actually going on. As you make your way further, the protagonist will suddenly collapse of exhaustion and reawaken in the library. This is the area where you get to meet your new companion, which will guide you for the rest of the game, a furry latex monster named Puro. Puro initially states that he wanted to transfer you in order to become stronger, but quickly becomes hesitant after finding out that you're a sweaty gamer. You are given many opportunities throughout the game to interact with Puro, whether it's to ask him about his life and how he came to be, or getting a better idea of the situation inside the monster infested building. These interactions with Puro actually play an important role, as they affect what type of ending you will get. Yes, this game has multiple endings, five of them exactly. I will get into more detail on these endings later in the video. After making it out the library, and through the ventilation system, you will find yourself in a sort of weird pool area. That's the only way I can describe it really. The most interesting thing here is that you have to fight two bosses. A shark dude, which you win against by just avoiding attacks, and a squid dog. Now, this boss in particular gave me so much trouble the first time I fought against him. What you're supposed to do here is have his tentacles smack right back into him, but it can be difficult sometimes because they can get stuck inside of him instead and sort of stay there until you get randomly smacked by one out of nowhere. Once defeated and the building's main power has been turned back on, you are greeted with the reality that you have been stuck here sleeping for 5 years. Proceeding forward, you will be greeted by Puro, who explains that he is unsure if you will be able to survive if you escape the building, as the world lies in ruins. To give more context to this, throughout the game you can read certain articles which explain some of the background information like how there is a deadly virus outside which kills humans. Animals do not get negatively affected by this virus, and so scientists decided to experiment with human and animal genes. They developed 
this sort of latex substance which infuses animal genes with human genes, allowing the human to not be affected by the virus. However, a lot of the experiments failed as the latex substance acted more like a parasite, which needed a human host to survive. This is why the transformation occurs, as the latex substance fuses with the human, taking over both the human's mind and body. Before the scientists were able to create a successful sample, protests were breaking out and the world was ending. Finally, a group of protesters broke into the building where the experiments were taking place and spilled all the latex substances, causing them to lose consciousness and become furry latex monsters. Then, after five years, the protagonist awakens to the mess that is the current state of the world. Now that that's explained, let's go back to Puro. With your chances of survivability being close to zero, Puro takes it upon himself to decide your fate. He sees you as someone important to him, which is really sweet of him, but as a result decides to make you his host and transfer you. This way you'll be able to live, maybe not as yourself, but as a furry latex monster instead. With this the game comes to an end, and so does this video. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Remember what I told you previously? This game has multiple endings, and this is just one of them. The bad ending. This happens if you don't build a good enough relationship with Puro throughout the story. If you do in fact build a good relationship with Puro by thanking him when given the option to and generally bonding with him, the scene changes and Puro instead will accompany you for the last third of the game as instead of being pessimistic he becomes optimistic towards your survival. Which is good for us the player since we are no longer forced to become a furry. What happens next has traumatized me for the rest of my life. It's this white room you see. On the surface, it looks fine, but this room is a nightmare to get through. So many white latex monsters get spawned, and you somehow have to maneuver around all of them whilst avoiding these weird pillars and not accidentally getting stuck on random latex plants. What's worse is that to the left there's a doorway, and so I spend like a good 20 minutes trying to get to it, only for it to be shut. You have to make it to the other side of the room, and yeah, well good luck with that, you're gonna waste almost an hour like me trying to do that. In my opinion, this room is the hardest part of the game, nothing compares to it, or maybe I'm just bad at the game, I don't know. Once you get the door open and get through a chase sequence, you'll be introduced to the second major furry character in the game, Dr. K. Now, Dr. K doesn't like you and so he gasses you and then throws you in a testing chamber. He does this because he believes you may in fact possess the very virus that killed everyone else. He doesn't want you spreading it, so he pretty much wants you dead instead. He's sort of this game's main antagonist, but like, not really. After escaping the testing chamber, you meet up back with Puro only to see him and Dr. K both lay knocked out on the floor. Don't worry though. The sweet floof is okay. You and Puro both proceed to the ground floor of the building, nearing the entrance and your escape. A few rooms here and there and voila, the final scene. A sort of showdown happens between Puro and Dr. K, where they both try to justify their reasoning for you escaping and the consequences of that. But ultimately, you bear the final choice of whether you want to stay with Dr. K and prevent the spread of the virus, or leave the building with Puro. Whatever you choose will lead you to an ending, so if you want to skip me spoiling any of the other four endings that is besides the bad ending which I have already talked about, skip to this part of the video. But you might as well continue watching as I may have already gone into too much detail for the story. Whoops. Choosing to leave the building will lead to Puro and you venturing outside. Not long after the protagonist becomes tired, and Puro suggests taking a breather. After Puro talks for a little bit, he suddenly calls out to you, only to be left with nothing but silence.
Oh crap, wrong game credit. It's funny though, both games end in a similar fashion. You get an achievement for this ending, titled Termination by Sunset. And it's with these three words, you realise that the protagonist dies here. Most likely as a result of being a carrier of the human killing virus. This ending did leave me bawling my eyes out. I mean, it's quite depressing. Not only because he died, but because Pura is left on his own once again, after being so hopeful and cheerful for making a friend. Because of the emotional impact, this is my second most favourite ending in the game. Alternatively, if you choose to stay, then Pura will simply leave the building by himself, and you get to enjoy the rest of your life living with Dr. K. At least now you won't be able to spread the virus outside. After you make it out of the testing facility that Dr. K puts you in, you may end up getting a different ending. In this ending, Pura loses the fight against the Doctor, and pretty much gets game ended. With Pura no more, Dr. K uses a sample to transfer you and keep as a pet. This ending is generally triggered by not waiting for Pura to cross to the other side in the white latex room. In other words, it's triggered by not building a stronger relationship with him. I personally would have never figured out how to trigger the last ending. I mean, try to guess by the name of the achievement, Turn to Wolf. Maybe somehow get Pura to transfer you whilst keeping your consciousness, or perhaps some kind of item you have to interact with. Well, actually, the way you trigger this ending is by pressing escape on your keyboard. When presented with the final two choices of either leaving or staying, I get it that it's supposed to act as a way to cancel the choice, simply choosing neither. But still, how was anyone supposed to know this unless they so happened to accidentally press escape at this moment in time? Well, actually, you see, escape is used to cancel all dialogue choices in this game, so in a way it makes sense, but still, I think it could have been more clearer to the player that cancelling dialogue options was possible in the first place. Anyway, in this ending you choose neither option, and instead are offered the last ditch solution by Dr. K, that is, permanently turning you into a furry. I mean, what did you expect? If you can't beat them, join them. I'm kidding. The whole point of this ending is to solve all the major problems. Turning you into a wolf with the same sample that Dr. K used will negate the effects of the virus whilst allowing you to keep your consciousness and enabling you to live longer. Dr. K also gives Puro some sort of robot to transfer, which fixes Puro's host problem. You and Puro then leave the building, and everything plays out the same way as in the Termination by Sunset ending. Except, this time you respond to Puro when he calls out to you, as you no longer die by the hands of the virus. This is the happiest of all endings, and naturally my favourite since the fluffy black latex that is Pura doesn't have to suffer. Still, I wonder why this option wasn't stated by Dr. K initially, as it pretty much seemed like the best solution to everyone's problems, but whatever. The one thing I can't figure out is which ending is canon. Multiple endings are referred to as true endings by the developer after you speak to them at the end of each credit sequence. So perhaps it is up to the player to decide which ending is actually canon or not, or rather the true ending to the game. But from what I've seen, most people choose the change to wolf ending as the true ending of the game, due to the fact it results in solving most issues and generally being a happy ending to the story. Now that everyone is up to speed on the story of the game, let's discuss the good, the bad and the furry. First of all, what this game does good is offer a lot of unique transformations. Almost every new room you enter will have you turning into a different fairy monster. And I really like that. It actually made me want to purposefully fail just to see what kind of transformation occurs. This is definitely the main selling point of the game and is what makes it stand out. What I also liked and found interesting is that regardless of the wacky nature of this game, the game still tries to take itself seriously. I especially found this to be the case with Dr. K's diary entries, where he tries to rationalise his decision of becoming a latex monster, saying that he did it for the sake of survival and humanity. Yet, in the end, he started to resent his decision as being something other than human 
just doesn't seem right. It is these little pieces of information that help build up both the characters and the world of this game. Speaking of characters, Puro's development was great, having him go from a lonely coward who stays in the library all day, to someone a bit more courageous, who is willing to fight for you. Friendship truly is magic. Dr. K on the other hand doesn't really change much. He is first presented as a threat and an antagonist trying to defeat both you and Puro, and then at the end he just turns to the ancient technique of Tok no Jitsu. Dr. K isn't really a bad guy, he's just a realist who doesn't want all his efforts to be in vain. He's an interesting character for sure, but I still wish he posed with some kind of threat at the end of the game. He is also a character you meet quite late in the game, and so it feels largely unused and underdeveloped. I also want to touch upon the music of this game. All the tracks were produced by Shizzy, a friend of Dragon Snow's. Now, in my opinion, the soundtrack is actually decent. It has this 8-bit style to it, and I think it fits perfectly with the pixel graphics of the game. I've even been using this soundtrack throughout this video. Personally, my favourite tracks have to be Puro's Home and Outside the Tower. They both just make me want to cry. With the good out the way, let's talk about the bad. The major problem for me with this game is the gameplay. Although there are some different gameplay elements present, like Pura throwing you or sneaking past the furry latexes, they are all really simple and are never built upon or utilized ever again past the rooms they are first presented in. Not only that, but most of the gameplay can feel repetitive. I wish there was more depth added, like maybe an inventory system and or map system having you actually explore the building at your own leisure and figuring a way out rather than just a linear system of going from room to room in an already predetermined manner. Having Pura be a playable character could also have been a fun gimmick, but these are just examples, don't take them too seriously. The exploration in this game also falls short, there are no secrets or items to collect, instead interacting with some objects will simply lead you to becoming transferred. Yes. Your reward for exploration is becoming a furry. I mean, a unique transformation does occur which is nice, but still, I don't think dying and being booted to the main menu is much of a reward. Furthermore, this game suffers from major RNG issues. Most rooms do have a sort of solution or pattern you can follow to clear it. But there are times where this won't work, as a certain monster may take a different route, catching up to you at a faster rate. This randomness element can kind of screw the player. What I mean by this is that you can take an appropriate path to clear the room and it works, but there are times where the exact same route just doesn't work. It makes luck feel as though it's a major element of the game, which is off-putting. Another thing is that when trying to read extracts or notices in a room with latex monsters, the game doesn't pause in the background resulting in you instantly dying after you finish reading. This means having to constantly redo parts of the room as you die trying to read all the lore. This is something that would just make the player not want to learn more about the world and instead just move on, which I think is a shame. That's all that I can remember regarding the bad things about this game. And so now for something a bit juicy. I've already established at the beginning of this video that this is in fact a furry game. Anthropomorphic characters have existed in video games for years, yet those games were never referred to as furry games. So why are newer games referred to as such? Has it something to do with the rise of furryism and the furry community? Perhaps. But even so, not all new games that feature furry protagonists are considered to be specifically furry games. When you think of furries, on one hand you probably picture hopeless romantics dressing up in cute costumes and on the other you most likely picture the endless spawn of furry adult content. I believe it's these two elements that most likely need to be present in a game to be referred to as furry. So then, how does this relate to change? 
First of all, the designs of the latex monsters are very cute, and they do resemble fursuits in a way. I mean, you straight up get eaten by them and get turned into a furry. That is already the most furry thing I've ever seen. But what about the adult element? There are no sexual scenes, and there is no genitalia in this game, so then what's the problem? The thing is that the game can be suggestive in certain scenes, but the way I see it is that the sexual nature of this game is more so perceived more than real. You can choose to view it in a more sexual or kinky manner for sure, but you can also look at it as just a funny dumb furry video game. And that's exactly what I did. I just ended up seeing it as a cute but weird video game. Perhaps I played the game wrong, and I was supposed to get this weird sexual feel from it, but I just never did. This is all my opinion and my experience of the game of course. You don't have to agree by any means. It's more fun if you don't honestly. But anyway, it's this suggestiveness that gives this game the more adult element, and it's probably what makes it a furry game, and there's nothing wrong with that. I do want to point out that I have nothing against furries or the furry community. They are cute in their own way, and I do think they get a bit too much hate sometimes. What's ironic is that I too am a hopeless romantic who likes cute stuff, not to mention, by making this video I already dug myself a pretty big hole. But Let's not dwell on that. After all, it's time for my final thoughts on the game. Now, regarding my final thoughts on the game. The game's style is both charming and cute, which is nicely juxtaposed with the horrific truth of the latest creatures and the protagonist's situation. It is clear that context and reason is given for most events in the game, given there was more depth and thus making it feel more alive and real. Although the puzzles were very easy and the game lacked a lot in the gameplay department, the story of the game was actually nice, even though it wasn't overly complex. Having a simpler story made it easier to follow and understand, and I think that the overall bizarreness of the game fills in for where both the story and the gameplay might have failed, as it kept me constantly intrigued. The game overall felt more like an experience, a unique, sweet and fluffy, yet horrifying experience. As such, I would like to strongly recommend this game to anyone who hasn't played it yet. But be prepared, you may end up being a different person after playing this game. Like me for example, no normal person dedicates both their time and energy to make a video on a furry video game. And if you choose to not play this game purely because, oh furry, then I have only one thing to say to you. You're a pussy. With my final thoughts spoken and out the way, I do want to say thank you to whoever might be watching this video. And well done for surviving, as the quality of this video probably isn't that good. This is the first time I have ever recorded my voice and produced the video, so it is very, very rough around the edges. If you did like it, then be sure to leave a like. If not, comment your disgust instead as YouTube has unfortunately removed the dislike button. Rest in peace. Also, be sure to subscribe if I ever find the motivation to make another video. This has been Wolf of Greed, see ya! You're telling me that the protagonist had a name this whole time and that his name is Colin. How was I supposed to know that? What the fuck?